my call. Your will is mine to command. Curses. This arrival of the true risen is most inopportune. Sovereign of Vermin, the ritual must not be disturbed. Let not the Arisen approach. You can manage that, I trust. It is a vital importance to have a word of you. The pretender need not be present. Efforts are for naught to reason. Now, simply watch as this world's hollow and fruitless order is remade by my hand. The ritual is complete. The dragon comes. Behold! The Royce Dragon! By my power, the dogma of dragons is unmade. You could never understand a reason. We must all be freed from the vulgar order wherein the dragon's existence determines all. Hast thou summoned the resolution to face me? Then answer me this. Why dost thou fight? Is it to reclaim thy flesh, thy stolen heart? Or is it to reclaim thy throne? I offer thee a choice. Grant unto me this life in my claws, and be gone from this place. Or stand and fight. Pitiable arisen. 
The time for thou to make thy choice is come. Show me the path thou wouldst walk. Go, and thou shalt live to claim thy coveted throne. Fight and thy life is forfeit.
closer. This is your moment, Master. Strike true. Aim for the creature's heart. Instilling its pulse is no mean feat. It can be done.
would heed this arisen. By will alone doth the world form a ring, an unending cycle. Why do you pursue me, Arisa? You have fulfilled your charge, are you not satisfied? Seek you greater status? Perhaps to rule the world in time? It is how you desire you need merely spy out. Choice is thine, Arisen. By thy will alone can the course of the winners of fate be altered. You would still resist your fate. Understand you the folly of such a decision. Even the beating of your reclaimed heart was born of the great will of this world. Yet you would abandon it. Everything in this world, all that you have come to know as reality, is the creation of the Great Will. Should that will be lost, no mortal being can survive. However, if regret yet assails your spirit, then perhaps you should reaffirm your choice. Witness with your own eyes, or through the eyes of another, the fate of this world.
If it is thy will to defend the world, then thou needst simply bring me low. Yet what reason hast thou to attempt such a feat? Turn back. Leave now, while you can. You have strayed, Arisa. And for what? Lest you forget. You have a world where you belong. There, you are to fell the great evil in your path and rule the people as their sovereign. For that is who you are. And it is my wish that you should live out that life of purpose. The time has come for you to return. Go. My children shall see you there safely. Let us go home together. To a world under your rightful rule. To a world all your own. This is your will. Then behold, a world unmerciful, the left with the benevolent hands of God. This is your world, the world to which you longed to return. Alas, if only you had chosen to become sovereign. At the end of your travails, you could have ruled over these lands in perpetual peace. Yet that world of limitless possibilities has ended. You stand now upon its remains, the vestiges of a world that could have been so much more. Innumerable wills have served to deliver this world from extinction time and time again. You alone have refused to carry out that great purpose. What you see before you 
is the consequence of your apathy. Behold. failed to be chosen, and as twill ne'er be read, this world will soon cease to exist. In the blink of an eye, the sickle of oblivion will reap aught that you have known. I would advise you not to waste these last moments. Explore the remnants of this world while you can. Perhaps, in doing so, you shall come to see the truth. And know the wretchedness of a world unworthy of being chronicled. How shall you fare, I wonder? Will you endure in this world, abandoned and unprotected? world. Would that there was someone who could explain this madness. Come to think of it, did not Sir Rathea speak of releasing the world from its bonds in the seafloor shrine? If this is indeed the world unbound, then perhaps we ought to seek out his wisdom. is nowhere to be seen, Master. But where would a pawn possibly go, leaving their own master behind? Perhaps this too. No longer do I feel the probing gaze of the Watching One. Is this your doing, newest of the Arisen? I am he who brought the dragon low, and o'er its bones raised the proud kingdom of Vermin. Despite the magnitude of my feet, I was dissatisfied and sought ere greater heights, till at last I ruled the world entire. Thus did I come to know of the Watching One. 
The being by whose many eyes and ears no one or thing in this world goes unobserved. As to the purpose with which they watch, I know not. Yet I did divine one thing. This world has lain neath the watching one's unwavering gaze ere the dawn of its history. I despaired at this discovery. For, if all is but a stage, did that not render my hard-won glories, my throne astride the world, mere spectacles for the all-seeing eye to watch? I twas was all a farce, and I, the fool, exulting in my wooden crown. Do you understand, newest of the Arisen? This is why I sought to fell the Watching One. Alas, though I cut down all who seemed false, be they man or woman, human or beast, and young or old, I did not succeed. Indeed, my efforts led only to my own ruin. I was dubbed the Mad Sovereign, and by the hand of a new arisen, consigned to this place forevermore. Yet, I can only assume that you have achieved what I could not. How else to explain the changes I sense in the world? Ah, oh, what bitter gall that I cannot witness the outcome for myself. Falter not, newest of the Arisen, for your path is just, and fading spirit though I am, I may yet summon those who can be of aid to you. I see you have returned, Arisen One. The Mad Sovereign has called, and so we answer. If you would save the people of this world from ruin, lead them here. For this place may chance to escape the coming destruction. I imagine the people of this world will welcome the tidings that there is a place of refuge awaiting them. The Mad Sovereign's power yet girds this place. It could prove the last bastion of hope for the people of this world. Alas, it will not hold forever. The coming destruction can only truly be forestalled if tis sundered at its heart. Since times of eld, dragon blood. Remember, draconic blood flows through the veins of lesser drakes as well. Then I bid ye farewell. We too once bore the mantle of Arisen, though no longer. As we walked our respective paths, each of us lost the incomparable strength of will that made us arisen. One in despair of the dragon's boundless might, one in pursuit of vengeance's cold comfort, and one for fear of what fate held in store. Yet you bear it still, arisen one. Hold fast to your strength of will for it shall doubtless lend you the strength you will need to spare this world its end. This is Genra Caril, Kemen Ros Tindome Nun Meltol, Morvea Kuruir. You're no elf. Halan Lome Meltol. I am called Darren. My brother taught me to speak your tongue. <laughs> so different from our own. Do you understand me? I learned the words, but 
This is the first I use them. <laughs> Others of your kind have come here, but my people warn them away. Oh, but I cannot stay. I must, um, see to the Arbor Heart. There are useful ingredients to be gathered here, I'll wager. Shall we see if there's aught to be found while we're here? Non fe nimbawe. Ala Kail, Heron on Alastar Monelinda. The sky glows red with fury. My duty is to the Arbor Heart, she is called. She has been with us uh, a very long time. She is nature's very heart and a pillar of strength for my people. We have always lived in harmony with nature, and the Arbor Heart is our. Uh, uh, a connection to the land, yet um, day by day her strength is, is failing. I must give her nourishment of the soil to help her recover, a special kind called Gwifentia in my language. I know not what you would call it in yours. Once a dwarf wandered into the arbor and gifted some to us. It filled the arbor heart with life. Now, um, Little remains. Too little for the Arbor Heart to recover her strength in full. She begins to... wane. Do you know of this substance? It must be found outside the Arbor somewhere. If you find any, will you tell me where it lies? Are you? Valis Harenum, Halana fear in Mine. Lamentari. Is a road far non? Fin a new man in Tayan? One can neck him in Indo? Your pawn is nowhere to be seen, Master. But where would a pawn possibly go, leaving their own master behind? You say you're on the hunt for Griffentia. Darren asked that of you, I expect. It is said a woefully lost blacksmith once stumbled into the arbor and left some of it with us upon parting. In your language, it is called by another name. What was it? I know I've read of it. Of course. Scale Cinder. That's the one. It can be found in Batal, I believe. I know no more than that. It isn't much talked about, you see. The blacksmith was a dwarf, and the elders rather prejudiced about their ilk. My friend, how glad I am to see you yet live. When word reached me of your uncanny disappearance, I admit I feared the worst. What has become of this world? Our people fear for the future. We cannot be sure we will be safe here. Yet this place is all we know. All we have. You think we need to evacuate? I see. And you know of a place where we might find refuge? I should gladly follow you, but I fear my father will not be so easily persuaded. Nonetheless, we can but try. Come. As arborist, Sir Taliesin is the leader of the Elven people. Let us follow our guide, that we might speak with him. It is as you say. Vindelnar, ne veo norwende lis kemen, moriven lis erumar meltol netara. Kasinke telpe nun findaler. Nun mor arda her. Karilm ilmen arcael, silfa nambawe nun kalail alame, angadur sindi. Mor nambwe hiroth enfane ava silmines fana. Eruar ne kemen malantar ingadur, fielis lintan morivin nun we ingarina? Kemen indor kanyan iris aldekar. 
E per l'er, le affermor e il daglia era lotte. Ondovana al vecchil, e per l'er ne andler ai lami. Hmm. I am afraid my father has closed his heart so tightly that even my words cannot reach him. If only the Arbor heart were restored to health, perhaps he might be persuaded. Salma Arendt, Alekano Nan. A treasure chest. Shall we see if we can't make our way over to it? Oh, what now? Don't bring trouble to my door, you hear? More than my life's worth, yes. We have arrived. Wow, wow. Look who to What brings you to the smithy? Looking for scale cinder, are we? Well, you're in a look. Our forge is flit. Oh, tis at an elf's behest, you say. I'm afraid that changes things a wee bit. Elves and dwarves don't get along, see? Brocker won't want to help you, unless you were to offer him aught he couldn't resist. Listen, I happen to know there's one bit of elven culture no dwarf can turn their nose up at. All elven fares bland as grass. All of it. That is, save this singularly flavoursome dish, Nutriab. Of course, no dwarf would openly admit to having a taste for it, but the fact of the matter is, the mere smell of that dish has dwarves foaming at the maw. Don't believe me. Bring a ball of it to Brocker. You'll soon see. So the blacksmith ought grant us some Gwifentia in exchange for Nutriarb. Shall we inform Miss Darren of this, Master? I believe I can guide you to the person in question. Thank God. It's yours. Lead on. Well enough. Where to next? So the blacksmith ought grant us some Gwifentia in exchange for Nutriarb. Shall we inform Miss Darren of this, Master? I take it you've some business with this. Have you found Gwifentia? A dwarven blacksmith has some? Truly? But elves and dwarves do not see, uh, eye to eye. I fear the smith will not heed my plea. You believe he will if I prepare an elven dish? Which one? Nutriarb. Dwarves have a liking for it, they say? Are you certain? Nutriarb is not very tasty. Few elves enjoy it. It is a pungent stew of um, old fish and apples, boiled till it forms a, a, a thick paste. But I shall prepare it, if it has any chance of bringing me Grafentia. The Arbor Heart depends upon it. Would you be willing to gather the ingredients for me? You won't have to go far to find them. I thank you. I need only the two main ingredients. Rotten apples and rotten fish. Bring them to me, and I will prepare Nutriarb. Rotten fish and apples? My stomach lurches at the very thought. But I suppose we ought to procure them all the same. I suppose it's so? We're unlikely to find any warm hearth stuff. Let's be prepared to make our own lights before we proceed. Understood.
Our foes are like to use the dark against us. Must focus on finding victory, whatever our discomfort. That went as well as we might have hoped. Let us cast our eyes about and analyze the situation. Do you have the ingredients? This is all I need. I will prepare the dish now. It shan't take long. My people dwell in the mountains, so we are rarely able to dine on fish from the sea. This dish was first made by an elf with a craving for fish, where no fresh fish was to hand. These fish already stink of the sea. Left to rot, they turn even more um, pungent. <laughs> Nutriarb is oft served at celebratory events, but I have never seen anyone eat it. Everyone turns their noses from the smell. Hmm... I must endure! It is almost finished, thankfully. The stink is more than I can bear. It is ready, but it is so vile. I cannot understand how anyone could stomach it, let alone enjoy it. I fear the Dwarven blacksmith will be angry if I present him with this, but I will trust in you. Come, let us away to Batal. I thank you. Here, my brother gave this to me. Might we not use it now? The sooner we arrive, the better. Look as long as you please. Do come again. A customer then. That changes things. Some of the things. Go on, have a look. I'm in mean, no hurry to leave. Well met. A customer, then. That changes things. If you were privy to the goings-on in the Forbidden Magic Research Lab, even among the Batali. Indeed. And the researchers employed there are as- You're back! And who's that you've got with you? An elf? I ne'er met one afore. 
Not quite what I imagined, if I'm honest. Uh, well met. The name's Sarah. I'm an apprentice here at the smithy. Well met. She's the one who's after the scale cinder, I expect. Have you brought some of that elven delicacy along with you then, like I suggested? Yes. I have the Nutriarb with me. Marvellous. I thought I smelt it on you. Mark me. You put that in front of Brocker, and he'll fain hear out your request. Right, follow me. I've just cleaned out the forge, see, so we'll need to make for the cavern where we dump all the excess scale cinder. Come on, you two. The cavern's this way. Shall we follow Sir Sara, Master? With any luck, we'll have pockets full of scale cinder before the day is done. Very well, if I must. A customer then. That changes things. I'm at something of a loss. But a long day of work. What's all this racket? I thought I told you that... You imbecile! You brought an elf here, of all things! Get her out of here, now! Hold a moment, Brocker. She's brought something for you. Don't you want to see what is? A gift. For you. Bah! What makes you think I'd be able to stomach your elven cooking? I'm gonna go dispose of this. And I expect the elf to be gone when I return. What am I to do now? What you came here for, of course! This is your chance! Truly? But... You'll have to be quick, mind. Brocker makes short work of his meals. While you're at it, you might have yourselves a little competition, eh? See who can collect more of the stuff. Anyway, good luck. I'll be outside keeping watch. Best start searching. Brocker might be back any moment. It seems Sir Broker has a taste for the elven dish after all. Let us use this chance to gather ample scale cinder. Oxcarts aren't operating anymore, are they? It is perfectly understandable, albeit rather inconvenient. This is not the reward we would have asked for. Cast it aside would only make it more pointless.
time we pressed on, wouldn't you say, Master? Where else can I look? is racing. I thought the dwarf would catch us. How much scale cinder did you get? You've got so much. With this, the Arbor Heart will undoubtedly recover. For now, I must return and tend to the Arbor Heart. I hope you will come visit us again. I should like you to see the Arbor Heart, um, restored. And I must thank you as well, Sarah. You and the blacksmith, Brocker. Not at all. It was my pleasure. I'm sure Brock would say the same if he weren't so stubborn. Now the Arbor Heart is sure to recover, and seeing Miss Derren's cheerful mien made all our labours worthwhile. We seem to have arrived without issue, but are we safe here? I suppose we might as well gather what we can. At long last, life buds anew from the Arbor Heart. If we make a, a cutting from her boughs, she could take root elsewhere. 
We can make our home in any land, so long as she is with us. And though we may leave the arbor behind, we will carry with us something far more, um, precious. Our lives. I wish to speak with father. Would you come with me? A treasure chest. Shall we see if we can't make our way over to it? Findelnar, nevea nolwendelis kemen, morivin lis palan oio eromar meltol netara. Kasinke telpe nun findeler, nun mor arta her. Fionar elwe arfarne nenwen sur orne, i avstir lalastar. Nun falasmir, madananon? Morvani morivin, Findelnar. Neveatara morivin. Lis fa aldakar kemen ros. Hera war lis nun. Yav morin garina like asar kemen ros iloratu anfir tara. Eteler karil morivin alkadar palan. Kemen nun lis alekano. Surne kemen ros here non yav kuruir. Fallis isil rod lintar, neja valekano vea nun sinde lungtena. Nun lis amanda kil angadur femor. Hede non nun lia findelnar, lia wemor. Findelnar morivin orne osto, firnis morivin. Morivin kemen tur alekano. Menelum heroth mor karilm an our door. Alcarwa fir nun eldaya. Ane martir tindome ingarina fa alme alcarwa. Et aler le affer mor eldalia eralote. Sorne an famelton. Vanelin heros sorom. Kasinke telpe nun findeler. Lera ne fir hera non, an ne arte her fir nis. Nun lis amanda kil angadur. Only time will tell whether the cutting shall take root. For now, let us make for the seafloor shrine. You carry the very soul of our people with you, my friend. I implore you to treat her with care. Nun wir Oyonda. Ata. What am I supposed well, to do? Met, My heart is light as a feather after that exchange. This is generally used as a material.
Valis Harenum, Alana Fee in the Casinke telpe nun finda ler, lera ne fir heranon, anne arta her firnis, aidalia anandor, nun lintan. Heror anne oya fermor, anendune faluntena? Nenambue yavstir uru findelnar, lia teren ayale. Kemen ros uru ne teren, ne romen anar telpe minasvana. Nun kemen ros osto luin el dalia, ne kemen vea al carua. Luintare me kinalen meltol, parante lume an lis, ne kemen kayainju nun sil, ne meltol linkan al dakar an fir nun fiamor. Mori vin paran vanis in tiel? Palan hiar menran, lis fa arne fane. Arte har, Lis manasvana fui numen alecan, elorato ala, nun mor arta her. Firnis an erumar isil rod et teller, lera aetena. Nenwen mor aiwanon, al carwa fir nun eldaia menelume sur carilm. Iav stir lalasta, nun falesmir malananon? Anna Morlis, Turculion, Echialis. I thank you, friend. It would be no exaggeration to say that you have saved my people. Your fight continues, does it not? Be well, and come back safe. There's a ladder here. After you are risen. These are troubled times, but rest assured, our door. Soft. You know where to find. I fear I've no wisdom to offer. Mayhap we could bring the people to the seafloor shrine. Your Majesty, how glad I am to see you safe. Where have you been this past month? The end of the world. Are things truly so dire? Though, I am aware of the dragon attack on Melv. We received word that naught but a smoke in ruin remains. Twas a tragedy, and I would not see it repeated. However, without a clear path, we and the guard shall be hard pressed to forestall the impending crisis. You would have me evacuate the city? I see. Mayhap it would be for the best. Ever since the fall of Melv, the citizens of Vernworth have lived in fear that their homes are next to be assailed. If there is safe harbor to be found elsewhere, I believe we have naught to lose by seeking sanctuary, but I doubt I could convince the people of this city to abandon their homes, however terrified they may be. Methinks your majesty would do better to ask this of the Regent King. After the false sovereign vanished and the world was altered, his grace has been the one keeping order here in Vermont. If the people will heed anyone, tis him. Maintaining order in Vermont must be quite a burden upon the young Regent King. Let us aid him however we may. It is easily done. So you've come. I'm glad to see you. Captain Brandt has already apprised me of your proposal. A full-scale evacuation of the citizenry. Truth be told, I had reached the same conclusion. So long as we cower within these walls, 
We must live in fear of going the way of Melv. My ministers have approved the plans, and I have petitioned the encampment survivors and the Thieves' Guild for aid. The only remaining obstacle is my mother. She has set herself stubbornly against any such flight. I have tried to make her see reason, but of late she has taken to shutting herself in her chambers. However, I fear that my position permits me to entertain her fancy no longer. I must put the needs of the common folk before her selfish whims. Now, there are a few matters I must attend to before we can evacuate. And I would fain welcome your assistance. We will require several ox carts to carry the sick and aged out of the city. Might I prevail upon you to petition the merchant at the ox cart station in the west of the city for their use? You may assure him that the royal treasury will foot any and all expenses. Queen Regent Deesa hardly leaves her chambers, and all her meals come back scarcely touched between you and me. I fear for her health. Queen Regent Deesa hardly leaves her chamber between you and me. I fear for her health. Have you come to claim my life, Arisen? Well, far be it from me to deny you. But I shall go to the grave with a smile on my lips, for I have no regrets. All I did, I did for my darling son. So do as you will. I have no intention of begging for mercy. Do with me as you will. They wish they were in my boots. <laughs> if they only knew. The throne and its powers. The throne and its powers hold no meaning in a broken world. Queen Regent Deesa hardly leaves her chambers, and all her... This might be worth a read. A thorough perusal might... As long as I get my gold, who takes the carts is no concern of mine. His grace is welcome to them. We have chartered the ox carts as requested. Tis a pleasant change for things to go so smoothly, hey, Master? Aptly said. Mother, I must beg your forgiveness. I believe that you desired to make me sovereign solely for your own benefit. Yet in truth, you sought to better the lot of our people. Ah, but I would have benefited. And handsomely at that. Besides, I cannot deny that I was proud. I wish to see my own son on the throne, and no other. Even so, I cannot help but feel that all of this could have been avoided. Had I only been more attentive, if I had but better known your heart, I could have shared in your burdens. You would not have had to suffer alone, and perhaps together we could have walked a better path. Oh, Sven. Mother, I beg you, join the evacuation. You need not fall with this city. I would not see you take your crimes wholly on your own shoulders. That weight is as much mine to bear as tis yours. My son, you truly would make a fine and goodly ruler. Your kindness will save many lives. Of that I have no doubt. My son, your kindness will save many lives. Ah, you've returned. How fares your procurement of those carts? You do? My thanks. That puts paid to the last of our preparations. I will inform the citizenry forthwith. My thanks. I suppose your wounds won't heal themselves? Best keep still a moment. Your pawn is nowhere to be seen, Master. But where would a pawn possibly go, leaving their own master behind? Perhaps this too is Lord Phasus's doing. 
We ought to go and speak with him at the Forbidden Magic Research Lab. The Batali Knights use this place to train. You're not one of us, so I cannot imagine you've any business being here. Pray, leave us in peace. Oh? You believe we ought to evacuate? Farther, I dare say, than anyone would go for the sake of an idle jest. Hmm. If we must leave, we shall have to begin preparations at once. But I think we're a bit short on hands to attend to all that must be done. In fact, there's a rather delicate matter that I could use some help with. A blacksmith and his wife dwell on the encampment outskirts. Might you escort them here, so that they can join the evacuation? The smith, Gustava, is a man of good sense. But as for his wife, well, suffice to say, Cleuna has always been a contentious sort. She'd have naught to do with us, given the choice, and isn't likely to take kindly to the arrival of any of my knights on her doorstep. I can only hope that she will be more willing to listen to you, a third party, as to her. And while you're taking care of that, I will see to it that the incumbent is made ready to depart with all due haste. I had no idea that such a couple dwelled on the outskirts of Volcanic Island. Were you aware, Master? Well, well. Color me surprised. <sighs> I? What do you want? My husband and I are simple folk. In these perilous times, all we ask is to be left alone. Pray leave us be, sir. I'll collect that. You needn't trouble yourself. Sorry, you'd have us evacuate with the encampment? <laughs> Why, we could never! Come what may, this place is our home. Now, now, I'll hear none of that. Stranger or no, our guest came all the way out here just to warn us. That's the mark of a good sort, and I trust my gut. This one shan't steer us wrong. But, Ghost Offer, what of your back? Bah! I can manage a little walking, besides. I'd rather hike a thousand leagues on two bloody stumps than lose you, my dear. Oh, ghost off, how can I say no to that? Oof! Confirm this back of mine! Don't trouble yourself with me, sir. Lead on. Very well, sir. We shall join you. Would you be... Let us see our charges to the encampment. But be mindful, the path seems much changed since last we walked it. Outstanding! Mayhap this ladder is here for a reason. After you arisen! I suppose we might as well gather what we can. Well, here we are. How long before the evacuation begins, I wonder? Would you find Sir Ernesto and tell him we've arrived? Let him know that we'll wait here till the time comes. Is a ballista arisen? Ha ha! I can think of all manner of- Sir, I implore you to reconsider. Surely you can see that the situation is dire. How many times must I say it? I'll not be ordered about. Not by ye, not by anyone. Now bugger off and leave me alone. Ah, good. You're back. I'm afraid there's another matter for which I must beg your assistance. It concerns the fellow I was just speaking with. Sir Lamond, his name is. The man's something of a regular at our hot springs. I sought him out to tell him of the evacuation. But he has flatly refused to join us. I must confess, I'm at a loss as to how I might convince him. Could I prevail upon you to try your hand? At this point, methinks anything I say will fall on deaf ears. Perhaps we might speak with this Sir Lamond. The evacuation effort stands to benefit from another pair of hands. Oh, well, it is easily done. 
I? What would you of me? <laughs> not this again. I'm here to live my life as I see fit. I'll not be ordered about by anyone, cuz. You got that? Aye. I know those two. Good people. But I don't see why I should have to be the one responsible for them. Why don't ye do it? If they mean so much to ye. Oi! I heard out ye request. Kindly bugger off and leave me in peace. Sir Lamond has refused to lend his aid, and it seems there's little hope of changing his mind. Let us inform Sir Ernesto. This? I did not expect. So, Sir Lamond is not to be convinced. It would have eased my mind to have him join us, but I suppose there's naught to be done. The hour of our departure is almost upon us. It will be slow going, no doubt. We have wounded whom we must accommodate. Yet, come what may, I swear to see them all to safe harbor. The people of Volcanic Island are evacuated. May they make it through the impending chaos intact. I suppose tis so? These have quite a long range. Let us make use of this during battle. I've no doubt it would catch our foes unawares. It would seem we need not always travel by foot, if novel inventions such as this are to be found. I dare say there'd be no harm in using this. Really, no. You mustn't shirk your duty. Lest you forget, tis the arisen we serve here. I'm well aware of that, thank you. may yet be evacuated. Let us begin with the place most likely to be marked for destruction. Feel the ground tremble underfoot. Tis proof that the volcano is very much awake. Be on your guard. The monsters here are prone to frenzy. Ready? 
Hey, bother. I was just getting warmed up. when we did. Try not to get hit, lest all that boom go to waste. Thank you, friend. I dread to think what might have become of me had you not happened along when you did. This place does not have long left, I fear. We ought to get to safety, though I have to wonder if anywhere is safe now. I'd gladly accompany you, believe me. But the others here? Well, suffice to say, they won't be able to join us. Follow me, you'll see what I mean. We are fortunate indeed. This is a rare find. I dare say the quandary of what to do with it is half the joy. The flow of time feels almost... It is a jail of sorts, this place. A compound where we set captured pawns to work. They were supposed to be digging up old ruins or some such. Confess, I don't know all of the ins and outs of the operation. Underlings like myself were given orders and little else, you see. Well, here you have it. They've been like this for a month straight now. They refuse to leave. You might as well try talking to a wall. I know they don't die like we do, but it seems cruel to abandon them here all the same. I never wanted to be here, you know, taking part in all of this. The enslavement of pawns doesn't sit well with me. I suppose that's why I can't bring myself to leave them behind. Either that, or the current state of the world helps to put things in perspective. At any rate, I've tried everything I can think of to get them out, but naught's done any good. I'm at rather a loss. The command came a month ago or more. We are to remain here, and so we remain. I implore you, Arisen. Take me with you. So they're staying here because they were ordered to remain. And they told you that, did they? Strange. I couldn't get a word out of them. I wonder why they saw fit to speak with you. But never mind that. More importantly, you've given me an inkling of the problem at hand. It was the Overseer's doing, methinks. When the world changed, that craven up and ran for his life. But on his way out, 
He used that artifact they call the God's Way to command the pawns to protect him. I expect that order of his is what the pawns were referring to. But why would they continue to obey when the man is long gone? Unless... Listen, friend. I have a thought. What say you have a look around and see what you can turn up? If the Overseer's command is indeed still in effect, it could be that he is lurking somewhere not far from here. Use that key to have a look around. It should open any doors you come across. Best keep your eyes peeled for the Overseer as well. I have a feeling he's still lurking about here somewhere. Pray, spirit me from this danger. I am sorry. Let me get that. Is it? How convenient. We ought to put it to good use. were being held here by the power of this god's way. Now they ought to be free to make good their escape. Splendid. It would seem we need of a key, but... Oh. I could really use some assistance. This wasn't supposed to happen. So... There was naught left of the Overseer but bones, eh? I'll wager he thought to take the pawns with him to the grave. He always was a spiteful old goat. At any rate, I'm well grateful for your aid, friend. Now that the pawns are on their feet, methinks I can get them to safety. I only hope they'll heed my words as they have yours. But I'm not worried. I'll find a way to reach them in time, no doubt. My word! Isn't this the God's sway? With this... I'll be able to guide the pawns to the refuge without delay. Now there's no chance of any of them being left behind. Seems I've no end of things to thank you for, my friend. I appreciate all you've done here. I'll get the pawns to safety, don't you worry. With this, their evacuation is all but assured. God sways are loathsome artifacts, but I suppose they have their uses. Outstanding! What business have you? I suspected as much, given that your pawn still remains. One might hypothesize that your pawn is sustained by your vital essence. Or perhaps something more. In any case, we ought to apprise one another of the situation. Is there aught you would know? Ah, yes. I trust it has not escaped your notice that the end of days is upon us. After you vanished, together with the Red Dragon, the seas rose to swallow the skies. Twas perhaps a month from that evil day when a new calamity befell us. A host of dragons descended from the skies and fell upon the land with fang and claw. 
Luz the Oracle called upon me ere you arrived. As she tells it, Melv and its environs have already fallen prey to the beasts. Tis surely only a matter of time before the rest of the kingdom follows suit. I found the poor creature collapsed by the wayside near Batal. Recognizing your pawn, I decided to take the ailing thing into my custody. I thought it possible that the Arisen's pawn might hold the key to making sense of all this madness. Alas, try what I might. Your pawn will not wake. Mayhap you will succeed where I could not. The pawn is, after all, yours to command. Indeed, then I shall take my turn. In your absence, I had hoped your pawn might yield me some information. But as you have returned, I would hear the truth from your lips. Tell me, Arisen, what became of you this past month? So following your plunge into the sea on the dragon's back, some mysterious presence reached out to you. Could that have been the world forged? Yet why would such a being linger in those fathomless depths? I can only speculate. And speculate I shall. This ought to prove a fruitful avenue of investigation. For that, I thank you. Now, if you can find a way to end this interminable slumber, your pawn is, of course, free to rejoin you. Oh, Master. How long I've slept? Far too long, it seems. But worry not. Now that I am awake, I shall follow wherever you lead. A moment long awaited. I knew it was only a matter of time before your skills reached a new height. There's no discipline that steadfast devotion cannot teach. Fancy a broken arm? Why, that's my speciality. Her Majesty has begun her supplications. None may see her ere they conclude. Stay your hand, Vera. This one may pass. Come hither. We would speak with you. So you are returned, Sir Arisen. We are gladdened to find you safe and well in the midst of this calamity. Now, to what do we owe the pleasure of this visit? You would have the people of this nation abandon their homeland to seek sanctuary elsewhere. Tis no small thing you ask of us. We will require some time to consider. For now, prithee speak with Sir Manella. You will doubtless find her patrolling the city. Her assistance will be indispensable if we are to undertake the evacuation of Bakbatal and the Checkpoint Rest Town. You've pushed your luck too far! I'll not take that from you! Pray calm yourselves, good people. I will have none of this squabbling. Sir Manella, you don't understand. This scoundrel's the one who started it. No, you don't understand. This is no time for the people of Batal to be quarrelling amongst themselves. We shan't weather this calamity unless we can recall our common purpose and unite our efforts towards it. I've just had a thought. I did not take to being a mage straight. That's quite enough. I'll not take that from you! Ah, Sir Arisen. You are returned, I see. With the world in such disarray, I could not stand to be away from my homeland. Thus did I return, to render what aid I may. I maintain order as best I can, but for every fire I extinguish, it seems three more are incited behind my back. But enough of my woes. What brings you here? You wish us to evacuate? Mayhap the idea merits some thought. After all, if we sit on our haunches, it is likely only a matter of time before we share the fate of Mel. Alas, the people of Batal are far from united in purpose at present. Should we proceed, unheeding of their divisions, 
I fear that our efforts would come undone ere long, with every soul at their wit's end. Conflict is like to spark at the slightest provocation. As such, before we take any measures, I would have you walk amongst the people, Sir Arisen. Behold their plight with your own eyes, and should you encounter any discord, pray do aught you can to resolve the people's quarrels and assuage their fears. Such efforts will doubtless allow the evacuation to proceed all the more smoothly. As for me, my work here is far from done. Let us part ways for now, and reconvene when you have accomplished all you can. Glad tempers are understand- You've pushed your luck too far! How dare you! But you had enough yet! You're the You've pushed your luck too- I'll not take that from you! As for me, my work here is far from done. Sorry, sir. Are you fond of those eyes? Keep them. I've had well enough of your nitpicking. I reckon the world would be better off without you! Oi, you! Don't go poking your nose in our business. This is between us. Aye, leave off or we'll make you! Bloody mine. Reckon you could just cut us down in the street? What's the matter with you? Hey? Fine, fine. We'll set our squabble aside for today, so bother us no more. How could you? Consign it. What more do you want? That's it. I've had enough. What to make of this? Oh, got my hopes up for naught. Well met. Oi! I saw it first. <laughs> Trust a flea-ridden hide to take it all for himself. And why must I share with a fangless one? This is no more your food than Batal is your land. You there! You couldn't have come at a better time. Put this upstart in his place for me, won't you? Go on, lay into him. If that's what you think, why don't you mind your own business? All right, clear off. Pretty words shan't fill our bellies. You'll get what's coming to you. I'll not take that from you. Stop this, father! Thank you, sir. I'll be sure to share it. You mean with me? For true? Thanks. I'm half starved. Oi, leave my kid alone! You're not some child snatcher, are you? Wait. You shared your food with them. I... Thank you, sir. As for you, Nomos, it would seem we were both but looking out for our children, hey? Aye. Mayhap we're not so different after all. And we've both our children fed. We've no reason to quarrel. The desire to protect one's kin transcends race and culture. It just goes to show, we are none of us so different. That was certainly worthwhile. <laughs> ah! Your 
You're just riding on your father's coattails. You slander my honor, sir. I demand a duel. This is no business of yours. Be gone! Now, now, Nara, let's not be too hasty. If we are to duel, we ought to have a witness. Otherwise, who's to say the victor fought with honor? Aye, true enough. Without a witness, either of us could simply kill the other, then disavow the use of any underhandedness. Well, sir, what say you? Will you watch over us while I take this scoundrel to task? This knave dared to slight my honor. He said my swordsmanship was hardly fit to wound a training dummy. The bloody nerve of him. <laughs> and I'd say it again. It was your dear father's patronage that made you a sentinel, not your own skill. You have my gratitude, sir. Let us delay no further. Come, Scario. Prepare yourself. How about you? Don't fret. How odd. You've got twice their pluck. No, I pray you. you. Oh, I can't We're not still in the it. fight. You're ten times stronger than I'll ever be. Heavens have mercy! <laughs> We're still in the fight! I don't know what to make of it. We'll pull through yet! What's this then? Another day of work. I'm in no hurry. You plan to roll a- I, I admit it. I underestimated your skill. The loss is mine. Nay. It was I who underestimated you. I'd thought to score an easy victory. But you fought fair and capably. We owe you a debt, sir. It is on your account that we've seen some sense. Were it not for your timely appearance, I'd wager this nonsense might have cost one of us their life. Indeed. Better to hone our respective skills than take up arms against petty slights, I say. It seems some things can only be resolved by crossing blades. But I doubt they'll quarrel again after this. My heart is light as a feather after that exchange. Ah, oh, Sir Arisen. In less pressing circumstances, I would take issue with your methods. But I cannot deny your efficacy. The people of Batal are beginning to see that they must stand together if they are to survive this calamity. We shall see the fruits of your labors when the time comes to evacuate. At the very least, we need not expect too much opposition to the announcement. Pray return to Empress Nadinia and apprise her of your doings. I must remain here to ensure no further squabbles arise. Heavens only know how many lives you have saved this day. I hope you'll accept this humble reward for your efforts. What say we report back to Empress Nadinia? Her Majesty ought to be willing to commence the evacuation now. By your leave. Places such as this ought to be protected. One of our ministers informs us that you have been espied in the city, resolving the people's troubles. You have our gratitude for your efforts, which have doubtless bettered the fate of this nation and its citizenry. Your journey continues, does it not? We wish you good fortune on your travels, wheresoe'er they may take you. Yet, ere we part ways, we would make another request of you. It regards Lord Phasus. Though we have implored the man to join the evacuation, he has staunchly refused to leave this land behind. We thought that he might be more inclined to heed your words, 
as our own have fallen on deaf ears. Would you be willing to call on him in our stead? Of course, you are free to decline if our proposal is an unwelcome one. Pray excuse the interruption, your majesty, but I fear time is upon us. I would see you prepared for the road ahead. Indeed. Forgive us, but we must take our leave. Farewell. Back Batal and the rest town are now safely evacuated. I am certain we can rely upon Sir Manella to keep the peace. That was certainly worthwhile. You saw the sky fall, I trust. I doubt you could have missed it. And wherever the sky falls, a dragon soon appears to lay waste to the land. Or so I had assumed, after what befell Melv. Yet aught here appears to be different. Has our ruin been forestalled, or merely postponed? I must examine that creature. It may well be the key to unraveling the origins of this cataclysm. I can see where we need to go, but some fell power is blocking our way. Many paths are close to us now. On account of the dragon's descent, no doubt. But we must find a way to reach it. Confound this obstruction. But I suppose I ought to have expected this. Answers were ne'er so easily won. Monsters. Summoned by that beast, no doubt. we might have learned. <sighs> Never mind. You've your charge, tis true, and the fiends appear to be falling back. But I trust you won't object if I take a sample of its remains. After all, your role is to save this world, and mine is to pursue its secrets. Though this land has seemingly been spared its destruction, there is no guarantee of safety. The oceans yet cloud the skies, and monsters swarm in ever greater numbers. As twill be difficult to continue my research under such conditions, I have decided to evacuate. I only hope that this sanctuary of yours will prove more conducive to my work. We've arrived well enough. Where to next? Alas, there'll be no sailing out in my boat after this. Those who call me a madman ought to leave me be. 
Why must I explain? The proof is in the pudding! You would gather materials here, Monster. Can we really afford to carry more? The other have loved each other.
way to get ourselves into an advantageous position. Of course. The creature is gone. Let us revel in the knowledge that this region has escaped its destruction. Those are not mere clouds. They seem to possess a will of their own. There must be.
The creature is gone. Let us revel in the knowledge that this region has escaped its destruction.
see you do not relent. Your persistence is most intriguing. What is it that impels you, I wonder? Alas, would that the world had not come to this. For I am certain that your tale would have been a glorious one. Yet, t'was not to be. You need only cast your gaze upward to glimpse the futility of your defiance. The end feels close at hand. Bah! Such loathsome premonitions are better cast aside. We seem to have a ride without issue. But are we safe here? Since times of eld, remember. There is no more you can achieve here, Lucy. The time for resistance is long past. For a well-crafted tale has no excess. 
prison. I am no longer a mere vessel. Your great will has imbued me with a lesser will of my own. Will is power. Tis the means to shape the world as one desires. to unfold. Yet, it seems I will not be there to watch it. Stage set for grace. 